Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the OSPF routing JWeb learning byte. Okay, so here in the example, we have two different routers. We have VSRX1 and VSRX2. And user one connects to VSRX1, and VSRX1 then connects to the internet. Then we have VSRX2, which connects to the DMZ server, and then VSRX1 and VSRX2 have a connection between each other. So what we want to do with this example is we want to set up OSPF routing between VSRX1 and VSRX2. And VSRX2 already has OSPF routing configured, so we're just focusing on VSRX1 to configure OSPF routing using JWeb. So with that, we want to ensure that the user can communicate with the DMZ server and also the internet. And then we want to ensure that the user can SSH to the loopback address for VSRX2. Then we want to make sure that the DMZ server can communicate with hosts on the internet. And also we want to ensure that the DMZ server can SSH to VSRX1, the loopback address on VSRX1 that is. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface for VSRX1 and get this going. Okay, so here is the JWeb interface for VSRX1. Let's go ahead and jump to network routing, and then OSPF. And then to begin, we need to create an OSPF area. And we're going to use area zero, and we don't need to configure any ranges. The area type, just leave that at regular. We don't want to create a stub or NSSA area, especially with the area zero. And then we can select interfaces. Now, these are the interfaces that we're going to put into this area. So with this, we want to put the Gigi003, that's the interface that connects to VSRX2 from VSRX1, but we also want to put the Gigi001, that's the interface that connects to the user, and the loopback interface. Now with that, Gigi001 and the loopback interface obviously aren't going to be connecting to another router that is running OSPF. So what we want to do there is we want to configure those two interfaces in passive mode. So we select the interface, click the edit button, and then select the don't run OSPF, but advertise it. That puts the interface in passive mode. So we did that for the loopback interface, and we need to do that for the Gigi001 interface as well. Okay, so both those interfaces are in passive mode. Gigi003 is not in passive mode. We want to actually form an OSPF relationship with VSRX2 over Gigi003. And let's go ahead and commit that configuration. And that will allow the OSPF adjacencies to start the formation process. And why that's happening, if you recall, we need to actually have internet access for the user and the DMZ server. Well, the user won't have a problem. We do have a default route configured, a default static route configured, that is, on VSRX1 that points towards the internet. But the DMZ server has no idea about that. So we need to redistribute that static route into OSPF. And to do that, we first need to create a routing policy. And we click the policies link to get to the policies workspace. And then we click the create button, select new, call this policy, let's call this OSPF def for short for default, uncheck test policy, click create to create a new term. And we're gonna say protocol, click create. We're gonna select static here. Let me all the way at the bottom, click okay. We gotta name this term, we'll just call this one, two, three. I don't know, just that sounds good. Doesn't really matter what you name the term. Okay, action, we're gonna to set to accept, and then click okay. So we're just going to redistribute static routes into OSPF. We just have the one static route configured on VSRX1, so that's okay. We don't have to worry about redistributing other static routes since we only have the one static route configured. So let's go back to OSPF. Then we have to hit the edit button for the global settings, and then select policies. We want to put this as an export policy. So click the create button under export policy section, select OSPF def for you know, default, click okay. Let's go ahead and commit that. All right, so that committed successfully. Let's go ahead and get to the monitor workspace. Then select routing, select OSPF information. Okay, so we have some really good things here. First of all, I want to point out the OSPF neighbor section at the bottom. That section shows what neighbors you have, the state, and basically the status of any sort of OSPF neighborships. And so here we can see we have one OSPF neighbor, has the address of 192.168.1.2. 
That's the IP address on VSRX1. We can see we're using Gigi003. The state is full. That's great. The ID of that neighbor is 182.168.200.2. That's that loopback address of VSRX2. And then it has some other information like the DR address, the BDR address, the uptime, adjacency time, things like that. So if you're concerned about an OSPF adjacency, check out this workspace. And then the other part, we can see the OSPF interfaces. We can see that we have Gigi001, Gigi003, and the loopback interface. We can also see that there's only a neighbor on the Gigi003 interface. And then we can look at the OSPF statistics. We can see that we have packets sent. We can click received. We have packets received. We can also look at the details to find out more information. And then one other thing, if we go back to the interfaces, we can select an individual interface and click details to find out more information. We can see the interface name, the state, the area ID, things like that, neighbor count. Now let's select the loopback interface and select details. We can see similar information, although there's no neighbors because it's a passive interface. And so the last thing we need to do is we need to test communication to make sure the user and the DMZ device or the DMZ server can communicate as we specified in the criteria for this example. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, here I have a router that is split up into multiple virtual routers, and there's going to be a virtual router for the user and a virtual router for the DMZ server. Okay, so we need to make sure the user can communicate with the DMZ server. And the user can, that's fantastic. See if the user can communicate with hosts on the internet. User can, and that's not too big a deal because the user is just using the static default route on VSRX1. Then we want to make sure the user can SSH to the loopback address on VSRX2. And the user definitely can. That's fantastic. Okay, so now we need to make sure the DMZ server can communicate with hosts on the internet. And he can communicate, no problem. That's great. And then lastly, you want to make sure the DMZ server can SSH to the loopback address of the SRX1. And he can do that as well. Perfect. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed how to configure OSPF routing using JWeb. And then we demonstrated how to verify OSPF routing using JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.